Beauty and the Beautiful has a number of science unit studies. Most of them are for kindergarten through eighth grade, and I have here their botany unit study. So let me show you the teacher guide and then one of the student guides that I put together. And I'm also gonna show you how I organize it and keep it all put together for when we're using it. So when you get the material, the teacher pages that you need, the instructor guide, as well as the student pages and the, any extras that go with it will be all together. So what I did is I took out anything I needed for teaching the unit and put it in a teacher guide that again, I found using the ProCook binding clear cover. There are 13 lessons. They suggest two lessons a week. So a little over six weeks to do it, which is a nice span of time. You can definitely make it go longer if you add in field trips and some extra projects and some gardening and that kind of thing. It does give a suggestion of read alouds that you can do and they do sell a read aloud book pack, which I'm gonna show you. It covers vocabulary. There is a link here to microscope activities and you can actually go on their website and see how to use a microscope. They have a great video on it. It talks about considering what season you might wanna do this in. You definitely wanna do it at a time of year where you can get out and see leading plants. We're in Florida so we can do it anytime. It has some field trip ideas, talks about how to set it up, it suggests a science wall, which can be a poster board, it can be a big chalkboard, a whiteboard. We use usually a trifold poster board type system, and that's where you can display some of the materials that they give you. This is the read aloud books that they suggest, and we did get them. Then there's a supply list. I went through and highlighted everything as I got it to make sure I knew that I had it. I definitely advise going through, getting all your materials, putting them somewhere where the kids aren't gonna get to them. So this is a Bible plant study guide. This part's optional, and it has a list of different plants and references to the Bible of when they're mentioned. And then you get into the lessons themselves. So again, I put in all the teacher pages here. It tells you what you need to prepare ahead of time, what supplies you need, what is your big objective? What's the main point? If you get nothing else across to them because they're squirmy and whatnot, it's the one thing you want them to know, so that's helpful. And then generally you're gonna show them some pictures or look at something and do an activity. There's gonna be vocabulary to cover and that's something that you're gonna put up on your word wall or your science wall rather. And then many of the lessons have a mini book that you put together. So I'll show you one of those. This is one of the mini books. You can just staple them. You can put them into a half size three ring binder using um, either three hole punch or you can get the page protectors for that size. I've done that. You could do disc binding, that would work. So this one, um, I didn't even put a cover on it. I just used regular paper. You can do cardstock for the cover. And you put these together. And so some of the lessons you're gonna read these and then we hold on to them for the kids to use for reference later. There's also extensions for kids who are in the older end of the age range. So grades seven and eight will have extra pages where they're gonna read something else. They're gonna maybe do a little bit of research and maybe some extra writing. So it has a science journal prompt where you can write about some different suggestions here. So we like those and you can use these even for the younger kids, but it doesn't have to be just for seventh and eighth grade. So you can see here, this one shows there's an activity with a bean and these are pretty easy to do. These activities are not something where you have to go buy out a science store. And if you don't have a microscope for the microscope activities, it puts all of those up on their website so you can see them. So here you can see ours, looks just like theirs hopefully, where we're growing seeds in a bag in a windowsill and see what happens when you turn the seeds different directions and how they grow. So that's what the teacher guide looks like. Also have student pages. I put any of the pages where they're gonna be doing writing and put them all together and bound them. For me, that was easier. Now there are pages where they're told to use a blank piece of paper or write in a journal. And for that, I actually made my own notebooking pages, but you could just bind in some blank paper. That would be totally fine. And what I did, I just took the cover that I downloaded, the PDF that they sent, and I added on in Canva. I think I used their names, so I know whose is whose. This is one of the pages that comes with it. It was a hypothesis page of how they think the seed will grow, and they can write and draw, so kids who aren't writing much yet, they can dictate to you and just draw, or if they are writing well, they can do it themselves. But then I also added in, rather than using 
a blank piece of paper, I made my own notebooking pages, again, using Canva, and put that in here. I think that my kids tend to put a little more effort into it when there's something pretty there for them versus just a blank piece of paper. There's also pages like this that come with it. You could put these in the student guide. You could put these in the teacher guide section. Um, these are also things I printed extra of. And then I also, we put one on our science wall. So again, this is pages that came with it, my plant life cycle. And then this is a page that I made for the so they had to sketch a plant that you pulled out of the ground. And so I just made a little border for it. Again, I think it tends to encourage them to do their best work. There's also a section here where they're gonna be cutting things out. The Good and Beautiful has a lot of cutting out. If you don't like cut and paste, this might not be the program for you. My kids don't particularly like to do that part, so I generally will cut it out ahead of time for them just to save frustration. Things difference between animal cells and plant cells, plant classification, tree benefits. They have a plant observation log where as they're growing plants, they'll record what they're learning and do a sketch of it. There's also a microscope lab section where they will record their observations of what they see under the microscope and sketch it. If you are doing this at home with your actual own microscope, you can get mounts for your camera that will let you put a smartphone on there so they can look at the screen or you can stream it to your TV so you don't have really little kids squinting and trying to look through a microscope or fighting over whose turn it is. So I will link to that as well. And then each lesson also has extras. So this lesson is number seven and it has a bunch of vocabulary words which we will put up on our science wall. Again, we just use that trifold foam board type thing, like the old science fair project boards, but a poster board or a whiteboard would work. It will have some beautiful artwork. There's a lot of these where they do some picture study. Different kinds of leaves, and this was neat. She put this in here. The activity for that week is to go out and collect leaves and look at them, but in case you're somewhere where you can't do that, there are pictures of different ones here, so you can cut these out and classify them instead of the ones that you find in your yard if you need to. There'll be parts of leaf. Again, the, after you use these in the lesson, you can put them up on your science wall for them to refer to the rest of the unit. Classification chart, paper for doing leaf rubbings. So you just put everything you need in a file folder, and then it's ready to go. The other thing that came with it were these neat little inspirational quotes, and I did laminate these and put them on our refrigerator actually. I just put little magnets or adhesive, they stick on. I'll link to those. I did want to show you how I store all the materials for the botany unit study and I found the simplest way is to use a file storage box um, or you could use a Rubbermaid tub but I like I already had this and I do like that the files stand up in there. You can put the teacher guide in there, you can put the student guides in there, Okay, so then if you look in here, aside from the guides, I have file folders numbered for each lesson. And I store the materials for the lesson in there. You can see I've got the vocabulary that gets cut out ahead of time and paper clips to some of the pages that go in there. I go through the list at the beginning of the unit and I put everything we're gonna need into this bin. All the materials I need for the labs and experiments throughout the unit study and the mini books that come with it. And that way when it's time to do botany, I just grab this bin off my shelf and I have everything I need ready to go. So I highly, highly suggest you that. Even if it's just a cardboard box left over from Amazon, put everything in there, label it, and put it up on a high shelf where your kids are not gonna get into it. That's gonna save you so much time. So quickly, I wanna show the books that come in the read aloud package that is an optional add-on to the botany unit study. These come from The Good and the Beautiful. This is a basket of plums. And it is a moral tale that teaches about sharing and different things. Plant Hunters, the story of two women botanists. So that looks really neat too. And it's gonna add in a little bit of biography to it. Carl in the Garden, that looks really cute. And again, it's gonna be about gardening and plant. It's also from The Good and the Beautiful, but it was not part of that package. It's in their um, bookstore area. And we're gonna do this one as a read aloud, Mr. Apple's Family, or I might have my 
second grader read it on his own. I haven't decided yet. There's also a flower study that they can get as part of that optional read aloud. And this one covers all the different common flowers, interesting facts about them, beautifully illustrated, and it has a game that goes with it, a card game. This is the game, it comes in this neat little box. The cards are by color and they are simply gorgeous. So just really beautiful illustrations, front and back, and photographs of these flowers. And there's directions here for two different games that they can play. And then we've added on, not from The Good and the Beautiful, but on our own, a Science with Plants book that has some experiments and information in it. I have this one on my shelf already, so it, it made sense to include it. And we got this book for my daughter. She's 10 and she's really into gardening right now. And that's in fact why we started our school year with botany, is because she was so interested in gardening. Because my daughter is so into gardening and that's what got us to decide to do the botany unit study, I did find for her a garden planner that she can use. So you can buy these on Amazon. You can buy a bound planner. I got one off of Etsy that was a digital download. I was able to pick and choose what pages I wanted and print them out for her. So there's a garden calendar where you can plan out what you're gonna do for the year. You can draw a layout of what your garden looks like. You can keep a list of pests and diseases, how you treated them, and if it worked. There's a harvest tracker. You can see she's been busy harvesting lots of eggplant and basil, catnip. There are also plant profiles. So as you plant a new plant, you can record information about it. That gives her one extra thing to do that we added into it. But again, you don't have to do something like that. It just, because we're doing gardening so much, it seemed like a really good way for her to both explore the scientific method and learn to take observations as well as incorporate some writing. So that's one more thing to do. Mm -hmm.